Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Dead Man's Doubloons, and it's from Thundergriff Games. If you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page. There will be a link in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Go to the page, find out more information than I could possibly tell you here, and hopefully consider backing the project. Now, Dead Man's Balloons is a competitive game for up to six players where you and the other players are pirate captains of the worst kind. You're pillaging, you're stealing stuff, you're hurting each other, trying desperately to get the most uh, treasure in a broad sense, which could be map fragments to other treasures, jewels, doubloons, and just pure reputation being the most notorious of the pirates. How you're going to do this is through card action selection, moving out of the map, trying to beat the other players to uh, the Skull Island and uh, get the most jewels, things like that. And Well, there's much more to it than that. So let me go ahead and give you a brief look at the game with a prototype copy of the game. So please keep that in mind. What you see here is, is going to change slightly in the final version. In fact, you can go to the Kickstarter page and see pictures of what the final version will look like. So, But just keep that in mind as we go through the preview copy. Then we're going to come back and we'll discuss it further. Dead Man's Doubloons is a competitive game for two to six players. The goal of the game is to have the most points by the end, which occurs when one of the player's captain pawns reaches the final spot on the captain's track. You'll get points for jewels, map fragments, doubloons, crew, and for having high reputation. You'll lose points if you become a ghost ship during the game or lose crew. Lay out the game board. Eight doubloons per player are used, and each player takes two of them. There are also two pillage strength plus one tokens per player that are in the stock. You'll have a bag full of three different kinds of jewels, emeralds, rubies, and diamonds. A deck of action cards gets shuffled without special captain cards for now. Special water tiles are placed face up in each of the four corner C areas of the board. This can be random or you can use suggestions by player count from the book. Three other sets of landmark tiles are just shuffled for now and you'll construct a stack of map fragment tiles using basic types and specials, again depending on the player count. Each player will start with a random map fragment. You'll also start with a player mat, depicting your character and special ability, which will give you bonuses during certain actions. In addition, you'll get a set of color-specific components, trackers that you'll place on the 10 hull space and the zero reputation space, four crew member pieces, and a pawn that will start on the island. Someone will randomly get chosen to get the first player token, and in order, each player will put their ship into one of the sea spaces. Every round of the game is broken into phases, some of them with simultaneous play, and some with play in turn order. At the start of each round, you'll place doubloons from the supply onto the map that can be pillaged, from 2 to 5 depending on player count. All players will draw 5 action cards, then choose 3 of them to place face down in a particular order. Then, simultaneously, every player will flip over their first card. This moves into the action phase, where, in turn order, players will now resolve the action on that first card. You start with movement, as indicated by the icons at the top of the card. If the icons are solid blue, movement is mandatory, but if it's gray, it's optional. You might either stay on a straight line or come about turning 180 degrees. Note that moving may cause you to have to resolve C effects, like a whirlpool. After moving, you choose one of the two or three actions depicted on the card and execute it. If you've been damaged, repair lets you move the ship hull marker by one space towards the max of ten, or two spaces if there are no other ships in your area. There are two types of attack, four and broadsides, meaning you attack all enemy ships in the next sea area for one damage or in your own sea area for two damage, respectively. Every time you damage an enemy ship, roll the attack die, which has blank faces, faces that kill crew members, and faces that steal doubloons. Losing crew is bad in this game, because it both means you'll lose points at the end of the game, but you also will take escalating penalties during the course of the game, according to the spaces on the crew track. For example, losing one crew reduces your hand size, while losing your fourth crew means you can no longer turn your ship around. You can hunt instead for an action. If you have fewer than two map fragments, you will draw another random map fragment tile. This will either be another fragment for your collection, plus one to your reputation, a protection orb that keeps you from being boarded, or a clue that lets you immediately either advance or exploit. 
Speaking of that, you will also advance or exploit if you hunt when you have two or more fragments already. Advancing, if the buried treasure has not been found yet, means you and the other players will move your captain pawns along the paths of the island, starting with you and going clockwise. The first time a pawn moves on a location spot, you'll draw an appropriate landmark tile, place it on the board, and resolve it immediately. Any other player who goes to that spot must also resolve that tile. Exploiting is for when the buried treasure has already been found. You will draw a landmark tile from any stack and choose either yourself or someone else to resolve it. Another action you can do from a card is Pillaging, which gets you a Pillage Strength plus 1 token. The last type of action from the cards is Boarding. You do this to a damaged ship and you have to have already used certain action cards already to enable it. By doing so, you can either steal a map fragment, steal half their doubloons, steal one of their crew, steal a jewel, or steal a ship, which really involves stealing their reputation. After the first card, everyone will flip and resolve the second card, and then the third. The next phase is the pillage phase, where you and the other players compare who has the most pillage strength plus one tokens to determine who gets the pot of doubloons on the island. The final phase is cleanup and checking for various game states. Any player who makes it to Skull Mountain will draw three random jewels from the bag, while those one space away get two jewels and those two spaces away get one jewel. All action cards at this point get discarded and reshuffled back into the deck together with the set aside captain cards from earlier. All captain pawns now go at the start of your captain track instead, and from now on, every time you play a captain card, you will move up on this track. All landmarks get removed and reshuffled, and pillage tokens are discarded. Lastly, the first player token goes to the next player. There is a chance that you will become a ghost ship. If your hull drops below one, you become a ghost ship, and the player that kills you gets a reputation point as a reward. As a ghost, you're immune to damage and you gain a bonus attack roll when boarding someone, but you can't move through water and all your treasure is worth negative one points at the end of the game. However, if you can gain five doubloons and return them to the island during the course of the game, you can regenerate to normal status at a fraction of your hull and crew. When one of the player's captain's pawns reaches the final spot on the captain's track, you'll get points for jewels, map fragments, doubloons, crew, and for having high reputation. You'll lose points if you became a ghost ship or lose crew. That is Dead Man's Doubloons. Well, pirate games are a common thing now, and there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, do them and... It's sort of retreading the same things over and over again. And I think what is the most interesting about Dead Man's Doubloons is that it takes that theme and goes in like wildly different mechanical directions with it. Because it's not just, okay, we have ships from moving around on a map and we have combat. It's action selection from cards that have multiple different actions on them. Using a card as multiple things is always a, me a mechanism that I really like. So there's it's on display here where you use a card to move. You have, then have an option of which of the different actions you want to use on it, but you're programming as well, so this is a programming game too. Uh, but then you also have the whole aspect of the the map, where you the, the island map, the, the world map, where you are trying to uh, get to, uh, you have to manipulate your captain's pawn out on the, from the beach up to the uh, Skull Mountain in order to uh, try to get as many jewels as possible, because those are worth a lot of points at the end of the game. But there's just a lot of things you have to worry about in this game. You can't neglect one thing over another for too long. Or if you do, you have to go really hardcore on that one thing and hope that it makes up for where you're lacking in other areas. Because maybe it is better for you to be stealing from the other players, and therefore you have the combat actions uh, to do there. You can also just try desperately to get uh, the map fragments, to, get, uh, to make use of the special abilities of the landmark tiles, which is, may be another case for you to, to rush to the mountain as fast as possible to get as many of those before the other players do. You also have, um, and, and this is, that, there's, there's variety there, there's also the variety of the different uh, player characters. So you have your own special ability, and that can give some more uh, variety and flavor to the game as you go over multiple plays of it as well. And you can have up to six players, so you're going to have very varied games. Um, then, I mean, there's so much in the game, and but I should stress that nothing in the game, or nothing, or, or no multiple things that come together in the game are overly complicated. Quite the opposite. This game is very easy to teach. It's very easy to get up and running. Fast to teach, fast to get up and running. And it doesn't play over long either. So, while it sounds like there's a lot of stuff I'm throwing at you with this preview none of it feels overwhelming. It's just this wide variety of things you can do and how are you going to do it? Because you're each selecting a card and programming them, 
you know that you're going to do something on this one card, and then it's just deciding on the fly what's the best action at that time, which is always a very interesting thing. Having options, but not being so overwhelmed by the amount of options that you have, because you've already made some of the choice, now you just have to narrow it down. And then the whole aspect of the game where it it flips, once you get to the mountain, uh, the game kind of flips, and now you're trying to, it, it becomes a bit easier to manipulate the landmark tiles, but now it's sort of a sudden death thing almost, where it's playing those captain's cards in order to move up on the track. Maybe you want to slow that down because you're not doing as well and you need to hit the players who are in the lead who want to play those captain's cards as quickly as possible to move up on the the captain track. So it's a very interesting flip that the game does, uh, you know, near the end. Uh, So, look, if you like Pirates... If, you're, if you like Pirates, but maybe you're tired of other Pirate games because they all seem to be doing the same thing or close to it, and you just want something very different, and if you want something that can be played with casual people or hardcore gamers as well, definitely check out Dead Man's Doubloons. You don't have to take my word for any of this. You can go to the Kickstarter project page and find out a ton of information, see samples of what the final version could look like, all of these different things, and extra stuff that they're going to have in the game, stretch goals, things like that. You can follow the link in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Those links will take you to the page, and you can hopefully consider backing the project. That is Dead Man's Doubloons from Thundergriff Games. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting our sponsors. As always, take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.